Sadly, a crash is inevitable. Quarterly annualized GDP growth projected at 0.3%. Manufacturing in its third quarter of recession. Farm debt at a record high. Farm bankruptcies up 24%. Investment down. While a staggering number of Americans live paycheck to paycheck with little savings, they also owe massive amounts of money that many will never be able to pay back. The Fed Reserve is pumping hundreds of billions into the repo market. Quarterly annualized GDP growth projected at 0.3% for Q4. Oh, yeah, things are doing great. The industry is bloated with debt. Debt destroys them every time because as the debt monster grows, it incentivizes them to sell more. Then they have to induce sales by more stupid crap that people want, but don't need. Prices go up and up. Executives get paid more and more. The market becomes flooded, people get tapped out, and the industry goes bust. We live in debt-based system. A debt system where the debt must ever expand. And since the entire industry is built on that debt system, it must ever expand. Any contractions will severely damage the global debt system. Downturns lead to layoffs. Layoffs lead to bankruptcy. Bankruptcy leads to less sales, and less sales lead to layoffs. They will have to figure out how to hand out money to keep the Ponzi going. But then, what's the point if you are just paying yourself to keep a Ponzi going? Wasn't the Trump tax cut supposed to result in corporate investment, rising wages, and new jobs? Too bad the stock buybacks and artificial growth of the stock market were more important to his corporate overlords. There may be jobs, but real wages have stagnated under Trump. And it's a fact that the manufacturing sector is in recession and business investment is at a seven-year low. People may be spending for Christmas, but what happens in January will be more predictive. And hey, if we aren't heading for recession, let's raise those interest rates to keep up with inflation and offload some of that balance sheet. So buckle up and hold on tight, because it certainly looks like we are in for a very bumpy ride in the months ahead. Welcome to Atlantis Report. If the Fed already did two insurance cuts and plans to do more, that pretty much means we are already in recession. You can't have it both ways. A distinct feature of this bubble is that corporations have taken on unsustainable levels of debt. When that blows up, household names will be waving bye-bye along with jobs and capital. Creative destruction. Corporations do not create jobs. Corporations destroy jobs. Get the government entirely off of small business, and jobs will be created. Just get the government off of small businesses' backs and no more free dollars. Small businesses will figure out the rest. Get rid of 99% of the government, and we will be just fine. What we have today is fascism. We'll take a war or a comet to do that, but there's hope. In 2001, countless tech companies had rounds of layoffs in the tens of thousands at a time, Nortel, Cisco, Ericsson, Broadcom etc. were not there yet, but signs are pointing down for sure. The first rounds are starting from what I see, so we might start seeing the more significant layoffs beginning in six months more or less. 50 CEOs told Gary Cohn to his face they had no intention of giving raises or doing any hiring just because the government wanted to provide them with a tax gift. And by the GOP's very own admissions in December 2017, their tax reform was first and foremost, payback to their campaign investors. Thanks, Citizens United. A bill that was the epitome of the DC swamp. Most of the people who lost their jobs in 2009 didn't get another one. Retired people who weren't working in 2009 were forced to get jobs since New York decided we needed lower interest rates, and savings accounts went to paying 18% on deposits. When you look at the numbers of actual employed private sector workers, you find a number virtually unchanged since 2008, despite 10 years of supposed job gains. Wages do not increase at the same rate as the funny money supply. The houses are not worth more than they were, neither are the cars. The money is worth less and you are getting paid less relatively. It's just bigger numbers so you feel better about it. What you're hearing and what you're seeing is not what's happening. 
That is basically what the government does, to convince you that everything is peachy king in the US economy, like the unemployment figures were only 3.5% when you have more than 95.5 million are out of work, which is almost 39% of the entire working age population, or that the GDP growth is 2%, when they forget to mention it is in negative territory and needs to be multiplied by 10, or the CPI being at 0.2% when cost of living and inflation is a geometric weighing is a mathematical mathematical adjustment, not a model of consumer behavior, or actual expenses. The government is trying desperately to hide the fact we are indeed in a recession. The workers that are the most vociferous about what's needed to turn the company around and or improve shareholder value are usually the first to be caught up in the layoffs. Management is self-preserving first and foremost. If they're the ones that lasted long enough to be the last one out the door, they've won the game. The guy that's charged with selling off capital equipment and office furniture is the champion. Zero is not the bottom. There is no bottom. The central banks will all just go negative interest rates. It's the next logical step for them and they'll get away with it too. Never before has the world gone into recession with interest rates so low they could go with inflation or negative rates or helicopter money. Or some other tactic that we have yet to consider. Who saw TARP or QE or mark-to-market coming? Anything that preserves the status quo and costs the elite nothing is fair game. Just give the elite a heads up, and they'll work the rest out. The power that be will do anything to bring about their evil one world order, NWO, the beast system of government, and eventually religion as well, under a digital banking and exchange system. If they come into agreement, then they will probably crash the stock market and collapse the banking system next fall, or at least try their best to do so, in order to cause people to not vote their conscience, but vote their pocketbooks based on the lies and propaganda of the left. The problem for them is doing a controlled collapse, as if it gets out of hand, and there are riots around the nation, along with a revolution and killings associated, then look out because D-Trump can declare martial law, and remain in power for an unlimited amount of time, and it could very well be that that is what God will ordain to happen. We just do not know. We can only speculate that things will get very rocky and that there will be mass shaking for America, as in the figurative spiritual kind, and as in the literal physical kind as well. 20 is going to be pivotal, to say the least. The end game is pretty straightforward. And it's pretty much going to happen one way or another, no need for useless blather. There is no means of avoiding the final collapse of a boom brought about by credit expansion. The alternative is only whether the crisis should come sooner as the result of voluntary abandonment of further credit expansion, or later as a final and total catastrophe of the currency system involved. This is nothing yet. Two of them, airliners, went bankrupt in the EU last two weeks, Adria and Thomas Cook, more expected by the end of 2019, and some at the beginning of 2020. If tourism and airliners are to be considered the tip of the iceberg, then it began melting recently. EU started to feel the beginning. Now we are waiting to see something real as 2008 to 2012, it was nothing. For crying out loud, everything since 2008-2009 has been predicated on central banks having monkeys pressing the zero key on keyboards to flood the system with fiat currency, I won't even call it money because it's not. This time is different. This time we will end up with tens of millions of people living under bridges and starving to death. Going forward, there will only be two classes of people, the haves and the have-nots. It is really that simple. It won't be that difficult to be a have as all you'll need are some assets, stocks, bonds, precious metals, and especially tools. If you have some of that, then you'll be fine. If you are currently in debt and do not have assets, then you and your family going forward will be living in abject poverty. Get used to it. When you have complete totalitarianism, anything can be commanded to be done, until the plebes revolt, and we are a long way from that, the stupid people are still fat dumb and happy. Every recession is the same. People lose income. Oil companies make a bundle, and banks rake in record profits. Banks get money from the Fed for almost no interest, yet charge consumers through the nose and pay precious little interest. Ask JP Morgan, which made a bundle recently. Same as it ever was. The Fed wants to control each and every dollar, who gets it, where it goes, how much of it is paid in taxes, how many times it's taxed, and, more importantly, what it is worth in terms of buying power. The exact same thing the masters of the universe do with data. All data must flow through them for final dispensing to its correct political agenda. 
Ultimately their agenda and the feds are the same. We have to go to hard money. We need tax incentives not to have children, population decrement policy. We should focus on looking after the frail and elderly. All roads lead back to the fiat money system, broken countries. Broken trade. Broken bond markets. Broken manufacturing. Broken businesses. Broken housing markets. Broken labor markets. Broken people. Malinvestments. Wealth inequality. Big government. Mass immigration. Wars. Even climate change. End the Fed. End the ECB. End the BOJ. End the PBOC. End the BO. End the SNB. End the RBA. Bring back the classical gold standard. Rich people can't withdraw money from hedge funds, end of the story. The bail-ins have begun. This was the Atlantis report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.